those of you who got an invite. Welcome to NerdCron. <laughs> no matter where in the world you are, we're all NERDS International. With the hyphen. Okay, so me and my friend Craig, when we were young, uh, I don't know, about eight, nine years old, we, uh, we used to hang around together, obviously, and, and bike around the streets, as kids did. Vagabonds. Vagabonds. Going around <laughs> stealing wallets. Causing trouble and knifing. Um, <laughs> and we, um, we, went, we, we went down Ryan's alley, funny enough, actually, because Ryan actually lived opposite me at the time. Um, and we found a can of paint, spray paint, and you know, and it had no, no, you know, little nozzle bit, it had no nozzle on it. So we, I decided to do what any kid would do and try and get the paint out. So what I did was I got a stick, jammed it into the end while looking at it, and blew black fucking <laughs> paint in my eyes. Mm-hmm. Legged it home, screaming that I was blind. And my mate Craig had to wash it out of my eyes for me. <laughs> it was a fucking nightmare. What a genius. What an idiot. And uh, yeah, look at me now. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why you make the big bucks. That's why I'm the big player now. Why did you, feel that, why did you need to get the paint? Because I'm an idiot. You, well, it's free paint. Free paint, mate. You were like, I've got to get it out. Go get that paint out, get it on a wall. Sell it. Sell it at school. <laughs> make a sick profit. Exact sick profit on black paint. But instead you blamed yourself. Coming at you live from a Scottish septic tank, it's me, Nick Lamley Lambslice. And me, Harrison Hunt, aka Flame Eyes. <laughs> Ooh, and together we are. The Tabletop Twats! Yes, and it's good to be back. It's good to be back once again. Like we always say. <laughs> no, we can say that this time because we've been ages without saying it. Yeah, and I actually am back. We are back. Yeah. Because you've been on holiday. I've been on holes, yeah. But this is an RPG podcast all about tabletop RPGs. And we've got a show loaded, a loaded gun. Of a show. Yeah. And we're going to fire it into your faces. With complete disregard. For safety. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what, what we got there, mate? We- <laughs> well, th- I'm glad you asked, Nick. Because we've got what well, you've been slaying, where we talk about what we've been playing we got the main subject where we're going to talk about our favourite free games as well as some new ones that we've researched today. Mm-hmm. We've got Adventure Call. We've got uh, the bloody Chamber of Challenges. Yeah. We've got the Electro Letters. And we've got our world famous award winning outro. Yes. I mean, it doesn't get hotter than that. No. It doesn't. Mm. Unless, of course, it does. In which case it would. Or you but, live in the sun. Yeah, exactly. If it doesn't get hotter than that, unless it gets hotter than that, and if it does, then um, stop complaining. Don't yeah, don't complain. Don't come to us and complain. (laughs) Idiot. Fuck's sake. (laughs) 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 Oi. Yeah. What you slaying? Yeah. So this week we've been playing Savage Warhammer once again. This is an ongoing campaign that we we've been playing for a long time. Savage Warhammer. Is is a good game, but is, but yeah. um, we've we've created a new new uh, character. Well, I created a new character, and I made a guy called Coat Greyfellow, <laughs> and this guy is a child, and he is. Um, for anyone listening, you might be into the uh, King Killer Chronicle series of books, which is basically like the most fantasy book ass name of series. Very of good books. Though. Yeah, they're amazing books, but it's just got the shittest name ever. They started with The Name of the Wind uh, by Patrick Rothfuss, if anyone knows those. Well, basically, I wholesale nicked the character from that um, and made him even more arrogant, if that's even possible. Yeah, he's very, he's he's, very arrogant. Yeah, and um, he's got the arrogant hindrance. But there was this... We were basically fighting a bunch of Skaven in, um, in like, a church. And we went into there, and all of the people in the church were like... Um, you know, really fucked and buggered and we're just like, what are we going to do? We need somebody to lead us. And this, you know, 10-year-old boy stands up and goes, I will do it. <laughs> yeah. And, he's, and we all kind of was like, um, actually, yeah. Yeah, but no one else said, <laughs> no one else so, said nothing. Yeah. So I was just like, I was commanding people. I was like, you get on the roof, you. Right, get fetch me some water. Okay, I need somebody to mop my brow. <laughs> and, and then um, he basically uh, went up to the roof and he's a magic user and he, he basically sort of uh, manipulates the elements sort of thing. Yeah. Yes. And his most powerful spell is calling the wind. And that is because I read that fucking book. And um, when he, he can do blood to, splat as well, can't he? Yeah, he can do blood splat as well, <laughs> that, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. But when he, went up to the, uh, when he went up to the roof, basically I was commanding a team of archers during this gigantic battle. And um, yeah, what I did is I, uh, a bunch of Skaven were on the roof and I used this uh, 
this wind spell, which was an area of effect spell. But at the, t- at the time, all the archers were in the way too. But I really wanted to kill four Skaven at once. Mm-hmm. So I just used the fucking spell. Nice. But I also killed three archers at the same time. Oops. And as soon as I did it, he's just like looking around, checking, just making sure nobody saw. And then <laughs> once he was certain nobody did, he was just like, right, that's all good then. Fair. Well, mate, you can't you can't make an omelette without killing a few kids. Everyone knows that. Exactly. That was something. That's a callback to an earlier episode. <laughs> but um, it was really funny because we had one archer left, and uh, I wanted to nickname him Bongo, but his um, his little counter on the map had a had a letter S on it, so he's now nicknamed Songo. Songo. <laughs> And so, yeah, we've got an archer called Songo who um, Coat just treats really badly. And, oh, after yeah. killing all his friends. Oh my god, vampire! You so enjoy vampire? we played vampire last night. Uh, that won't mean much to you guys because you don't know when this comes out. But um, basically, we had a whole ep- fucking session of combat. Um, it was brilliant. It was intense. Um, we got a new member come to our group, so I felt quite sorry for him because. We've been playing Vampire, what, about five weeks now? And there's been pretty much no combat. No combat. There's been the odd little bit. There's been some situations, but there's been investigation, finding our feet, becoming vampires, you know. And then Pete comes along for for the first session, and it was literally thrown straight into the deep end. Baptism of fire. But he loved it. Uh, he done really well. Reggie! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. Uh, what Nick is referring to is basically, there was one point where he, he basically the characters met where the old characters, not the old characters, but the current characters mm-hmm. were, were going to this place to investigate something. Yep. And it turns out that, he, he, you know, Pete, the new guy, was, was already there with his character, Reginald. And he was sneaking into the place. <laughs> and they sort of, like, knew he was in there somewhere. And they were mm-hmm. like, who's that? And he went, it's me, Reggie. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like, like, just <laughs> completely negating his sneak roll that he just did to get yeah. in. <laughs> But this whole, the whole story of um, of this Vampire Masquerade campaign is that they're investigating... Now, if you've read the King Killer K- series of books, uh, this will be significant to you because it seems that like I steal off it a lot. A group of people called the Chandrian. I've only nicked the name. Don't worry about it. But they're, a, um, they're basically a group of people that they're are... They're bad mofos, aren't they? Yeah, and they are killing vampires. And they're like they're like they're like Van Helsing's with gadgets. Like, oh mate, they're, they're terrifying. Mm-hmm. Um, they've got this badass armor. They've got like a gauntlet. Uh, not so, so they've got like a grappling hook type thing, and they're incredibly fast. They've mm-hmm. got these like um, they've got weapons that, are, that that fire these blue. We don't even know. We haven't researched it enough yet because we haven't been able to get close enough to them. But basically, if you see blue, you're in trouble. Mm-hmm. They fire these blue bullets that just destroy vampires. Yeah, and uh, that's what you guys are investigating. Mm-hmm. And so far, it's been really low key. Like uh, you, you'll see maybe like a, a flash of one, or you've seen one shoot somebody, then fuck off out. Yeah, that's it exactly. Or you've seen um, them written about in a book, but it's only been like fairy tales. Yeah, and all the all our uh, superior vampires, um, our sires and stuff, because the Chandrian are, uh, are basically the bogeyman, uh, you know, an old wives' tale to scare young vampires, if you like. Mm-hmm. They're just laughing us out of the uh, out of the sanctuary, which is our HQ, if you like. And um, so it's really, it's, it's, it's brilliant, but it's quite frustrating because you've got, you know, the, the, our superiors don't believe us. We've seen this shit going down and we're trying desperately to get some proof. We're finally starting to get there now. Mm-hmm. Um what have I got? I've got some boots. I picked up some boots from them because I've got blown to bits. <laughs> yeah, um, and you've you've encountered them really quite full on because yeah. every time you get to a place, it seems that they try to destroy any trace of evidence about about them. And every time you get to a place, any survivors, of which there very rarely are any, mm-hmm. will always report about a uh, bloke who has flaming eyes. Yeah. And um, you have seen him in the flesh now, this Certainly man. Have. And he is uh, well. Uh, he um, some basically we found out he's immortal as well. So well, like, he says immortal. he is. He's, well, he says he's immortal. Um, he's quick as shit. And he's <laughs> yeah, he's a badass. Yeah, he really he is. To take a beating as well. So. He killed my character. Yeah, you don't know what he is. Um, well, yeah. So it was it was pretty cool, and mm-hmm. it was a big big fight in, in big sort fight. of a town that, that had just been fucked over by the Chandri, and so it was really really um, really fun uh, uh, episode. It really was. Fun. It was really strategic. We, I mean, we, fuck, we, uh, we were we were down on our luck, but we managed to. Yeah, and I think the vampire realistically is it should be about role playing and about this polite society and stuff like this. 
and these these types of fights, these big things, should be a payoff. Yeah. And uh, that's what it was last night. And it was kind of weird for somebody for that to be their first session of Vampire. <laughs> yeah. But like, um, yeah, last night was a payoff after a lot of a lot of investigation. It was a big build a up. Talking, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I really enjoyed it. it I loved it. It was fantastic. Very yeah, very very good. So, um, and, and in addition to that, uh, you on your holiday. You played a little bit I of. Did yes, I was just very... insert imaginations. Classic, absolute classic. Well, I pl- actually, I played. Uh, I played forget about it, and I played half of bada bing bada boom. But we ran out of time. Um, it was fantastic, actually. I thought I would just try my luck and take a couple of RPGs with me. Um, I went away with my wife and her family. Um, so lots of. Um, brothers and and brothers-in-laws and sisters-in-laws and whatnot and uh, I, I said that obviously they know what I do and everything and um, I started talking about it and I said would you any of you guys be interested thinking none of them would but I thought I'd just bring it anyway blow me down Harrison five of them were in I blow, I blow you down blow sir. me down sir. I blow you down it was brilliant they were up for it and so we played and I said you know running through and I made you know rules light just so they get a good feel for it and stuff and um they absolutely loved it, mate. It was cracking. Um, so you played Forget About It. What, what is that? That is an adventure for Sandwich World. Sandwich right? World, yeah. It's um, uh, Imagination Already Inserted. Oh, no, that's your company. <laughs> Just Insert Imagination. Just Insert Imagination. And this um, is a... This is a gangster uh, gangster one-shot. Um, basically, yeah, you're you're from a, a family and you have, uh, you've got a job to do. You're out in Vegas and you're driving down the highway and you've got to um, get rid of a drop body, off an accountant. Yeah, exactly that. Uh, drop off a body. Um, don't want to give too much away. Go play it. It's brilliant. But we had, yeah, you know, it's one of them games where it's quite sandboxy. You, you've got a bunch of complications and things like that. And you, you know, you just... Win. Yeah, because I think there's there's like, basically the, the actual sort of idea of it is it's quite simple. Mm-hmm. Um, you just have to drop off this body in a certain place. Yep. But... Then the actual, um, it, like Nick said, it's a sandbox. So the actual uh, toolkit that you print off gives you twists and complications yep. to throw in there. So mm-hmm. you can, as as a DM, you can keep on chucking things in there exactly. to fuck the party over. And it, so it might be something like the cops pull you over and you break down. Yeah, anything, something like that. <clears throat> and um, that's that's the fun thing. So you don't want to, yeah, as Nick said, you don't want to spoil it too much. We by by giving those twists and complications. No, not good, yeah. Away. So. Yeah, check that out. It's really cheap, isn't it? Uh, oh, God, yeah. Uh, you can get it on Drive Through Buy PG for about five bucks. I think it was it Pay What You Want. No, I'm not too sure if that one's Pay. I think it's not even One that. of them's Pay What You Want. I can't remember which one. Size Matters is Pay What You Want. Um, I've got a feeling that they might be about five bucks. Uh, they're brilliant. They're very well put together. Um, they're great for beginners. Uh, my lot loved it. They had a really good time. Um, I inserted an NPC into the party just to kind of in case he was needed. It became the butt of all their jokes. It was brilliant. Um, and right at the end, uh, one pe- uh, one play character decided he was going to kill the other play character because I gave them their secrets, which you hand them at the beginning, and they really played true to their character. They really got on board with it. And um, yeah, by the end of the game, they was asking if they could play the next one, which I was absolutely blown over by. Very nice. Um, so yeah, we played a bit of uh, Bada Bing Bada Boom after that, but ran out of time. So it's on hold, and we're going to finish it off when we get back. But I've definitely, definitely converted at least four people into uh, playing RPGs. Yeah, so I'm no, really no, pleased. Two of the guys that you went with, uh, or actually more, I think, are very much into their heavy metal and they yep. said they wanted to play Vampire. Yep. So oh, yeah, definitely. When I, uh, when I explained to Rachel that you have to play it by candlelight and drink red, uh, drink red drinks, then she was like, sold. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so um, um, Harrison's promised that he's going to run a, run a little vampire yeah, one man. shot for him. Yeah, we'll do so that. So stay tuned for that. Um, the very, very last thing that I wanted to go over was Pub Thulu. This yeah. is our monthly Cthulhu game that we play in the pub. And uh, this was an absolute corker because my brother um, has done a fantasy hack for Cthulhu that he continued. Say what? Um, this was called The Madness of Steve. And this you had a big was, table as well, didn't you? A five year, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It was mm-hmm. awesome. And uh, this was amazing. This was one of the best adventures I've played for Cthulhu. I say this every time I fucking go, but like, this was amazing. This was fucking genius, man. Mm-hmm. Basically, this whole adventure was basically a dungeon crawl. We had to enter a bloke's mind. Oh, nice. So when we were in there, all the <clears> stuff <throat> that you were fighting were representations of, of the things that, that he thought. So I'd buy uh, that. <laughs> uh, yeah, everything, every room was labelled something like Steve's humility, Steve's guilt, yeah, or things yeah, yeah, like yeah. this. And, and so, there was a manifestation of it. Yeah, and we went into a room, and it was like Steve's guilt was all these all these little boxes, and it was like things the things that were in there were representations of, of things that he wanted to keep locked away. Nice. And so it was like we saw that room, and I was just and everyone was like, okay, well, there's going to be something we need in here. Mm-hmm. Let's start opening boxes, and I was like, 
No, let's fucking not. I'm not opening a fucking thing in this fucking room. You guys can fuck right off. And we just <laughs> yeah. started arguing. Anyway, um, yeah, it was a fantasy adventure, um, Cthulhu hack. So it was like um, Cthulhu mythos, but mm-hmm. set in a fantasy universe. And uh, we had um, a rogue, we had um, a ranger, a warrior, and we had a guy playing a magic user as well, I cool. think. I think. Oh, yeah, James was playing a magic user, and mm-hmm. I was a barbarian. Nice. And I decided just once. You was an incredibly was, thick one, wasn't you? Yeah, I was. And I was just going to play it for once, <clears> just the, 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 the stereo. It's got to be done. Because I, I like to play against type, and but yeah. for just once, I just wanted to play a cathartic experience, uh-huh. play an absolute idiot, and just play it like that. And, that and that's what I did. Fun? Really fun. And we got to this point, right, where we, we went through um we went through this room and we get we, we get there and there's this there's this big shiny door, right? Mm-hmm. And it's a big door, it looks like a portal. And bear in mind we're going through somebody's mind. So I see this and I think like quite obviously all this is is the portal represents um the, this means that it's a it's a part of his mind that he, that he holds sacred. That mm-hmm. it's got such a lavish door because he believes that this is one of the most important this is rooms. In, in a most sanctum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you know, something like that. Mm-hmm. So what I did is my character just goes, seems legit, <laughs> and dives through it. Oh, no. It turns out that that door, the door itself was a monster, and that it was, um, that it sort of like destroyed us, and that was oh. the very thing we'd, we'd been sent in to kill. And <laughs> it, um, it, it was like, that was what was <laughs> made, it was like killing him from within. Okay. And so as I jumped in, th- that, that was like, that was it. So you just died. I died instantly. Oh, my brother just my brother just stood up, took my character sheet, and just took it off me. And um, he was like, "Okay, everyone, roll for initiative." <gasps> and we were like, "Okay, whoops, uh, oopsie." Yep. So at <clears> least death I, by I, door. Said, I was like, "Okay, that was pretty funny. It was a funny death, but everyone knew to stay the fuck away. So immediately, everyone was tying ropes to themselves and tying themselves, um, and, and his daughter was trying to suck them uh, in. Cool. Yeah. And then they were all fucking shooting at it with their crossbows and uh, you know black powder weapons. They killed the dog. Shit. Uh, two of them survived. It was Ooh, not uh, too bad for Call of Cthulhu, really. Yeah, um, it was it was a success in in our books because usually deaths. everyone dies. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So they got out, and it was it was like done in two two acts, I think, because we actually had uh, the bit where we had to retrieve the materials to get into the other realm to get into his mind. Yeah, and then we had the bit where we went through his entire mind. So, and we did all of this in four hours. It nice. was one of the most. Uh, yeah, it was very well paced, and the actual idea for the adventure was amazing. So, sounds yeah, thrilling. I had yeah. a great time. Oh, yeah, really, that sounds really fun. awesome. Yeah, that really, really. So yeah, and the very very last thing I wanted to talk about was I bought a new product. What you got? I got um, classic battle tech RPG. You're in a bit of a, a bit of a mecha. Yeah, mecha just, trend well, at the moment. This, yeah. I saw this on the uh, on the Facebook group. Mm-hmm. But technically, I don't think this is really that mecha. No. Um, so this is more. Uh, it's from the Mech Warrior line of stuff. So mm-hmm. this is a reprint of Mech Warrior RPG Third Edition. Mm-hmm. Um, but you don't really. It's set in that universe, mm-hmm. but you don't really play in mechs. Okay. So you is it make cyberpunk. Yeah, you you cyberpunk. You mm-hmm. might fight them and things like that. As far That's as good. I'm aware, I haven't really done much reading about it, but I got it. In what it. system in it? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay. I don't know, but it's done by F- Fasa, Fasa, Fasa mm-hmm. Corporation. Okay. So it was back in the day, but it looks pretty cool. It's in bloody good condition. Yeah, it picked up for a tenner, so I'm pretty happy with the that. Blessed Facebook group. Very yeah, good. man. Very yeah. good that place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that shit. So Me thanks, too. thanks, guys. Even better if you like board oh, games, though. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that's what we've been saying. Uh, all right, so let's <clears> get on with the fucking main subject. <laughs> Woo! Mate. Subject. Play. Subject. <coughs> Sorry. All right. So today is the main sub. Today is the main subject. Today. What the fuck do I mean by that? <laughs> what I mean, you bloody lovely. Oh God, I love you. Um, <laughs> the the main subject. We're talking about our favourite free games today. We've done how to game on the cheap last time yeah. but we just wanted to celebrate some of our favourite free Show games out there some love to the free stuff yeah 
because we don't think that uh, you know free games get enough celebration because mm-hmm. you can get a lot of play out of these things and and we just think that that we should talk about some of our favourite ones. Yeah, I think they get written off quickly because they're free. It's yeah, like, but well, someone's put a lot of effort into it. They might not have the production value and stuff like that, like these big companies do, but they've poured their heart and soul into it. Give yeah. it a go, mate. Have exactly. Look. Have a bash on a free game once in yes. a while. So first off, uh, we're we're gonna talk about we've we've all we've bought like. One familiar game each, mm-hmm. and then we've done a bit of research yes. into one new game each. That we like the look of, yeah. So, uh, my familiar game, I want to talk about Harry Potter and the Tabletop RPG. Oh, and yes. now, I have talked about this briefly on the podcast before, but uh, I'm going to talk about it a bit more in depth now, so people can get a bit of more of a, a bigger picture of how, how it works, yeah. and uh, you know maybe see if you, you want to give it a try. Try it out, yeah, definitely. Uh, so first off, the premise of the uh, of the fucking thing, well, have a fucking guess, mate. Uh, it's, car chases. Yeah, it's car chases. It's seventies action. Mustaches, cops. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck do you think it is? It's Harry Potter. Of course it is. Uh, it but doesn't have for to those be of you Harry that Potter. have been living in a fucking mine for the last twenty years, <laughs> um, yeah, you play as wizards in a wizarding school. Mm-hmm. But I suppose that if you wanted to, you could expand out of that, and you could set it um, not in a school. You could be homeschooled wizards if you wanted. Could I be don't anything, fucking know. Yeah. yeah. But um, I mean, it does include a lot of rules for um, s- schools yeah. and Hogwarts and yeah. things like that specifically. So, but don't be disheartened from that. Because that is pretty much as far as it needs to go if you're not a big Harry Potter fan. Exactly. Um, yeah, so the premise is basically, yeah, it's a wizard school mm-hmm. school game. But uh, you don't necessarily have to do that stuff. But how you play the game, basically, is that you're it's a D10-based system. And the difficulties work similar to, to Pathfinder. So whenever you want to do something, you will have a list of stats on your sheet. Now... Those can be uh, they're your typical things such as strength and things like that. But in this, they're things such as um, I, I seem to remember they're things like um, finesse, intelligence. Expression? No. That's... Um, it wasn't expression. It was it was finesse, intelligence, um, wits, things like that. Yeah, that's but, it. So it's things like that. And then you also have your abilities. So it might be things like dark arts, potions, yeah. herbalism, flying, astronomies, astronomies. Things like that. And all you will have next to that is a number. Mm -hmm. So every time you roll the D10, you'll add that number to your D10. Mm -hmm. And that will hopefully help you beat the difficulty that the DM has in mind. Yeah. Very, very simple indeed. Definitely so, yeah. And that is it. And every time you do a class, you will get credits. And those credits will add up over a term. And those credits will hopefully eventually allow you to increase um, those skills. Yeah. And that is, in a nutshell, how you how you level up in the game. Mm-hmm. So, doing better in classes, attending your classes, and um, you know choosing what to do and things like that. So, let's say, for instance, in if you do any extracurricular activities, those might help you to level up in certain ways as well. So. That is basically how um, you can you can sort of build your character up and get better throughout the game. So uh, yeah, that's basically how, how the game works. It's um, it flows really well. It's really easy to pick up. I mean, we played it, didn't we, with uh, with someone who had never played an RPG before, and she picked it up really really quickly. It, um, and that is that is a real testament to how the game works because it is it is genuinely like one of the easiest games to play. Yeah. Um, and yeah, whenever you want to use a spell, it is very simple as well. You have um, on the right hand side of your character sheet, you'll have all of your spell casting rolls. So, mm-hmm. say if you want to cast a charm or a dark art spell, um, it will just give you a number and you roll that and you add it to your roll. Mm-hmm. And so, if you want to beat, um, if you want to cast a spell, it will say you need to beat this number to successfully cast it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you just add that to your roll and you try to roll it. Simple. Nice and easy. It really and you is. you can try yeah. to cast any spell in the book, but some are harder than others. Yeah, I think I tried to cast a spell that was actually like a difficulty 12, which I didn't realise at the time. Gave it a bash, failed. But you can, like you said, you don't have to level up. I'm fairly certain it was a spells. 17. But yeah, yeah that might really have been one, tough one. That basically Dumbledore would have had a tr- exactly. trouble doing. But, but <laughs> you don't have to play the game forever to level up to, you know, a, a, a nice little roll, a bit of luck. You might pull off an incredible, incredible spell. Exactly. And and that's that was what was really fun about it. Is no, There's no right down spells in your fucking spell book mm-hmm. none of this yeah. if you want to try something go 
fucking for try it. it. Yeah. And the thing is, although a lot of people might sneer at that and and things like that, it, it makes for a fun game. It really does. First yeah. of all, flows well. You're not yeah. looking. Oh, hold on a minute. Have I got enough of that? Oh, can I do this? It's just like if you yeah. got spells in front of you, give it a go. And uh, yeah, creating characters was really simple in it as well. Basically, uh, to, to like keep this brief, you just come up with a very quick and easy character concept. Mm-hmm. You spend points um, in any way that you want. So you just uh, basically um, put your attributes down, and then that affects all the scores and and what you're good at. Yeah. And then you roll for your wand because it's like from Harry Potter, the wand picks its owner, so you get yep. a random wand. Yep. Uh, there's there's no two ways about that and then you can pick some quirks about your character yeah. so you get to pick like you might be uh, good looking or you might be the teacher's pet or you can recognise people by their wand so mm-hmm. if you see their wand uh, ah, just on so its own so, yeah. Yeah, you, or you might have like a pet or something like that yeah. Um, yeah really really simple and the types of adventures you can have all sorts of shit in there you can have Investigation. Yeah, you can have just regular high school drama. High school drama. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You can have, you can have anything, anything you want. As you can have invasion of bloody dementors, if you wanted to. Yeah, you, know. you can have just pure combat, just yeah, just all kicking off in there. Yeah, exactly. That would be amazing. Um, is there much uh, in the way of um, adventures in the rules, or is it more none here's whatsoever. the framework and you got yeah, to, you yeah. Got Unfortunately, there's none really. It gives you a little bit of advice on how to to make some adventures and yeah. things like that, but. Basically, um, well, as to what can be like, like found in the book, it gives you how to create a character, mm-hmm. um, how to DM the game, all the spells, all the potions, and that's it. Well, yeah. it's a simple book, but it is well worth it for the fucking price, which is free as a fuck. Fuck all. Yeah. yeah and so- to be fair, if you ain't got much imagination and you're playing RPGs, then mm, you might struggle. Exactly. So yeah, I, I would highly, highly recommend this game. I absolutely loved playing it. Me and too. Can't I loved wait playing to play it. it again. Yes, absolutely. It was a very and um, uh, you know we've all read Harry Potter. Yeah, I liked it. So I'm not a huge fan. Playing the game, brilliant. The Don't is, have to be a Harry Potter fan to enjoy that game. Exactly. I, I feel like there's a lot of things out there that more might... a Twilight fan. Exactly. <laughs> But there's a lot of things out there that might make a mediocre story um, for a film, a book, or a comic, or whatever. I actually am a massive Harry Potter fan, but the fact of the matter is is that that even if you're not into certain things, they might actually make a a really, really amazing RPG. I said this this recently about the fact that um, Power Rangers, as well, it's it's, it's it's a kid's thing, but playing that as an RPG would be would hilarious. Be? Of course it would. It yeah. would be so much fun. The cheese of it would be unreal. It would be mad cheese. It, it would, would be so be, much fun. It would be so much cheese, but it would be great. And yeah, no, it's definitely 100%. Try Harry Potter. You will not be disappointed. Harry uh, Potter and the Tabletop RPG. We'll put a link in the description. Yes, we will. And Nick, what you bring to the table, son? My, uh, so yeah, I know we talk a lot about it. We talk about this pro- like pretty much on every podcast, so it's time we actually spoke in depth about the actual thing. But yeah. you, you, your one you wanted to bring to the table is... Savage Warhammer. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, Savage Warhammer is fantastic. It's a completely fan-based, fan-made. It's, um, it's not, yeah, like I said, it obviously, and it's free, you can pick up anywhere. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's Savage Warhammer, it's the best, in my opinion, it's the most fun I've had with Savage Worlds it's the, the and it, that's not down to it being Savage Worlds and the rules it's down to the Warhammer world it's mm-hmm. so grim it's so dark you constantly feel like every step could be your last um, and you the more you play it the more bleak you feel within the game and it, it really does consume you uh, Warhammer um, in a great way though and you start thinking like the world and you start acting like you, you know, it really does consume you in a good way. And um, it's yeah. not your run of the fantasy, though. It's like um, magic's frowned upon straight away. And it's dark and diseased, and it's, isn't it? Yeah, there's cha- I mean, you've got chaos at every corner. So how you play the game is basically it's it's been converted to Savage Worlds. So it uses the, fa- the Savage Worlds rule set. Um, again, you can get the basic rules of Savage Worlds on a freebie, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure there's quick start rules. No, I don't know about that, but I guess a lot of people already own Savage Worlds anyway, so technically that means that this one isn't entirely free because you need to get Savage Worlds to play it, but yeah. if you already own it, then then just download Go the for it. free yeah. Savage Warhammer because... Yeah, it's a freebie. So it's a freebie. It's, it's, it's all good. It's a big. It's a big. It's a big document as well. There's plenty in there. It goes into lots. Of, you know, it goes into good detail about um, the world. Um, it's got loads of items in there. Uh, in the in the document, uh, there's loads of new edges, new hindrances. 
things like that. There's no adventures. Um, it's got quite a lot of information about about the world in the book anyway. Yeah. And I suppose if you wanted, there's always the old Warhammer Fantasy roleplay wiki or, uh, of and course. things like that. Yeah. So you could just have a look at that. Brush oh, up a bit oh, on yeah. the lore. Exactly. To make if your you adventure. To. But so, it's, it's all there. Um, and I would say that, like, um, yeah, part of the reason that, that this is so fun is is the sort of characters that you can play anyway. And it's got a pretty uh, pretty good beast theory in there, as far as yeah. I'm aware, there's so. a big beast in there. You've got you've got um, you know you've got your, you've got insanity, chaos, and mutation. So you've got to deal with corruption. You've got to deal with what what's going on, and also you can mutate. So through the game, like <laughs> like Harrison's character found out. Yeah. You mutated. What happens? I thought well, you were trying to get like supervision, but you I just was, end up being trying, blind. I was trying to be. I was trying to be like a wicked mutant guy. <laughs> you just got and so I drank a, a load of warpstone and just made me blind, blinded. <laughs> so that let that be a lesson to you, right? If you, the thing is, if it, the movies will teach you, right, that if you um, get exposed to radiation, you'll become a superhero, but you won't become Superman. You'll become coughing up blood, man. <laughs> exactly. What the hell's going on, man? Exactly. So yeah. No, it does get. It goes into. You've still got some. Inf- you've still got plenty of information in it in the, in the document. Now you've got. You've got the eight. It talks about the eight colleges. Talks about magic. Talks about familiars. Creating familiars. There's loads on animals. There's a huge, like you said, bestiary. All the spells are in here. Petty magic. Uh, I think the careers there's loads I mean it's at least 90 pages worth of, of goodness of Warhammer role playing goodness and I think the the, the um, one of the cool things about this book is that it actually um, is a nice easy way to, to get your friends to play some Warhammer f- fantasy role play mm-hmm. nowadays without uh, having to pick up the old book because the old book is probably hard to find nowadays additionally it's like if you're all trying to get the same edition as well because mm-hmm. it's hard to all find the exact same edition we were lucky because mm-hmm. we all both got first edition I think we did yeah but on the blessed website yeah but um, but, yeah. but before we knew about that website we were looking for it and we couldn't find it anyway just get this for free yeah absolutely um, yeah you really should it's got everything in there you need and what you can't find like you said you can go on a wiki so what sort of um, what sort of characters you playing this? Uh, well, you got warriors. You got like mercenaries. You've got there's there's black black powder. There's gunpowder in it, isn't there? Black powder. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got uh, well, well, who's in our party? Let's think. We've, we've got, got the the thing is there's this big list of priests, um, healers, big list of uh, like career careers. Parts that's right. That. Mm-hmm. And there's like there's this whole thing, uh, whole list of there. You've got like fucking bear tamers in there. The absolute best one, barber surgeon. Barber surgeon, there's, there's shitloads. I mean, we, I played in a game where we had to roll randomly mm-hmm. on there. You roll randomly three times, and then you'd have to pick one. That's right. And yeah. So I had soldier, bear tamer, and something else. I can't remember what the third one was. Mm-hmm. I think it might have just been Tanner or something like that. Yeah, but I was yeah, just that's like, it. I was just like, mm, there's soldier, every possible job you can think of. You can take on new careers as you progress. Uh, I mean, what's my character? Is a um, he's an engineer, dwarven engineer, isn't he? Yeah, and then your your brothers are Rune Rune Smith. Smith. We and then we had a, uh, another soldier in the party. We had a priest yeah. of Shalia. Priest of Shalia. There, there's loads, man. It's, there's there's shitloads of characters. Mm-hmm. The good thing about it being Savage Worlds is the system is completely classless. And mm-hmm. I don't know about the original if it, if that was classless or not, but this is, and mm-hmm. it means that you you're playing this this sort of grim grim fantasy world, and you can just be whatever the fuck you want. It's, yep. it's fucking awesome. It is really good. Uh, I can't can't cannot recommend it enough. I mean. I think it's different enough to your D and Ds and things like that that you're that it's worth playing because I know a lot of people when they when they have a fantasy system they like they'll stick to that, but with this I think it's different enough. You're not just fighting goblins and goblins. You got Skaven, didn't 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 Warhammer create Skaven? Yeah, they did. Which and is you're like not mutated just, rats. Yeah, you're not just delving into dungeons, getting treasure and leveling up, right? You're you're. Uh, you're dealing with plagues, you're yeah. dealing with disease, you're dealing with towns being pillaged by rat people. I feel like Warhammer fantasy roleplay is kind of like a, a it's a situation where you're always going to be a loser. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, you, you never win, but you sort of dictate the terms in which you lose. Yeah, and absolutely. That, that is the best way that you could, you could possibly... The levels of, uh, of losing. <laughs> That's yeah, the only kind of control will... you have over your destiny. I mean, we get sent stories by people who play these games because, you know, um, they, they like the, the readings out that we do and mm-hmm. stuff. And we love doing them. And it's like, 
it's crazy to me that, that every single time we read them, they always end up with people getting butt fucked by something. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, I love yeah. it. And yeah. this is this is how our games always turn out. And this is why I would I couldn't recommend this enough. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I think people should check it out. Get out, check it. It's online. Just literally Google Savage Warhammer. And the book as well looks quite professional, it. doesn't yeah, it? It's, it's got it's, some it's, cool artwork and the, shit the, I think they've got the original... They've, it looks like they've used the same kind of font from the book, the original book. It looks like the Warhammer-y. Oh, yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah, and it's, it's a very put-together piece of... Uh, a, a document it's like 90 pages worth like I said there's tons of equipment in there you've got uh, all your magic spells it goes into a bit of detail on chaos mutations insanity corruption oh yeah I remember seeing the amount of spells in here is mm-hmm. worth worth it alone like, yeah it's so good for a free and for a, a free well. dog. yeah absolutely there's plenty the of monsters is, in there even if you don't know what you're talking about in terms of the lore just get on it anyway wing it yeah because, because your friends shit. won't know yeah it doesn't matter no one will take our prized lemons from us. Hey, has it been about 10 seconds since we looked at our lemon tree? It has been about 10 seconds since we looked at our lemon tree. <gasps> hey! Hey, what the fuck? It's a whore! It's a whore stealing our lemons! Next, So next up, I want to talk about Just Another Day. And this is a two-page RPG. Now, I know what you're thinking. All right, yeah, it's another one of those gimmick ones. Oh, yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah, gimmick, yeah, yeah, gimmick. A bit gimmicky. No, it's not like that. But basically, um, yeah, Just Another Day is a cyberpunk RPG. And this is actually really good, despite being one of those uh, one of those uh, two-page RPGs. Um, it gets the world set up in a, in, in a very short amount of time. But basically what it is is that the corporations have won, and you play as people doing these uh, runs. In shadowy environments. Oh right, yeah. Reminds yeah, I know, another game. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But um, Pathfinder. Yes, yeah, one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You have to find paths through the city. No, um, it is very similar to Shadowrun. I, I, I will give it that. But um, it's a really cool, um, simple cyberpunk game. And and basically, what it is is that um, yeah, you are doing these kind of Shadowrun type things in, in a city where where the corporations are king. Mm-hmm. Um, you're you you could be uh, you basically get given these jobs, and you will be you may be working for corporations. You may be working for the man. You may be working for the little guy. Okay, you, don't, yeah. you don't even know. You work and, for anybody. Exactly. And um, yeah, you'll be you'll have these uh, like cybernetic enhancements again, similar to Shadow Run. But uh, yeah, the, and and again, they, there could be anybody throughout the universe might have those. It yeah. Oh right. That. Okay. So it could be could be like uh, we we mentioned before in a previous take of this when <laughs> when I fucked it up. Uh, could be that a homeless guy has a bionic leg. He just likes kicking people up the ass. Exactly. So, um, the way the game works Sounds is fun. it is a D10 system. So, the uh-huh. DM picks a difficulty and you will have a score. Uh, You've got a beat. you got a beat and you have scores for your attributes. And whenever you do anything, you just add the attribute to your D10 and you roll that. Mm-hmm. Very, very simple. And you will have um, cybernetic enhancements that you pick at the beginning of the game. And those will add or detract from certain scores. So, you might have... Um, you know, a bionic eye, and that will give you a plus to, um, you know, your sensory abilities, but it will uh, give you a minus to something else, Mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. And you then pick tools as well, and tools will make things easier, but they will break inevitably at some point. So, for instance, a katana will make you better at fighting, and it will um, make fighting easier a certain number of times, but it will break when the DM says it breaks. And it snaps. So that's, that's it. good because then you don't get an OP weapon, mm-hmm. and then they just like you're just like oh fuck. And weapons don't Stop give you now. yeah they don't give you any bonuses in a certain aspect. But what it is is that um, a DM the DM will just give you uh, will say oh this task is uh, you know difficulty three because you have a katana. Got ya. Nice. So yeah, it's nice just, and easy. Yeah, it's really 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 simple game, and it looks like a lot of fun. And I would definitely play that. And the actual layout is really really cool for this and it is completely free obviously because of the subject that is by Brian Shooter and you can get that on Drive Through RPG and it is wicked bruv and it costs nothing yeah I, I think it looks like really good fun um, it looks good obviously yeah there it is in the most original thing on is the there planet is classes or anything or are you just whoever you want to be yeah just whoever you want to be cool um, like I said it's not the most original thing on the planet it does bear a lot of similarities to Shadowrun but I don't think that is a big problem because Shadowrun isn't, isn't two pages and Shadowrun you can't just sit down give, give a player this and play within seconds one of the cool things that this does as well is that it's got a um, instant 
uh, run generator, which I know Shadowrun does have as well, but this is pretty cool because you've got a 2D10 thing, so it generates a target and what you have to do with that target. Mm-hmm. So it'll be like you roll, it, the target might be a person or an object, yep. and then it might be that you have to save it, destroy it, uh, move it, <laughs> sit like on that. it. Yes, <laughs> yeah, sit on it, want. look at it funny. Yeah. And that's your mission. Leer at it. Yeah. Ooh, so nice. that's that is really cool. I yeah. really like it. Yeah. Sounds fun. And two pages. Can't go wrong. That is Just Another Day by Brian Shooter. Go check it out. Check it. My one might have the best title ever. I think you're right there. <laughs> I think this... Actually, we're going to say this right now. Tabletop Twats 2017 Award for Best Name of a Game. Best Name of a Game. Yep. It's right here. It's got to be this. So it's called Brutal... Big bad ball busting bloody battles. <laughs> that's certainly that, this win. Yeah, that that definitely wins that award. That's so. big bad ball busting bloody battles. It's brilliant. Um, it, again, it's absolutely free. This is by David J. Stanley, uh, and it's a hack and slash fantasy horror game. It's basically a um, d6 pool system. So if you're good at something, you have more. You roll more d6. It's as simple as that. Um, you roll. Uh, everything's really simple for the gym as well. It's literally just a pose rolls roll thing. So if you want to open the door, you roll in whatever, uh, and then and the door actually rolls, and then the door rolls. <laughs> yeah, which, which I think is amazing. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, hidden door can roll. Everything rolls. So it's just all the pose rolls for everything. Nice and simple. And yeah, like I said, if you're good, if you're a bit more better at something, then you roll more d sixes. And it? what sort of characters are we talking here? Because I saw there was a big big list of races. Yeah, you got it's your, it's your classic fantasy setup. Um, so you've got. Oh, Cyclops Turtle. What? Adventure. <laughs> Adventure Beetle. <laughs> yep. Catling. Okay. Cesspooler. Yes. Cyclopsling. Okay. Dwarf. Yep. Elf. Okay. Half Elf. Okay. Half Ogre. No, get to the good stuff. Half Orc. Half right. Troll. No. Uman. Rubbish. Night Stalker. Yes. Font Phonite. Phonite. P H O E N I T E. What the uh, fuck? Uh, well, Fo-o night. Well, no, it's like part phone, part human. Fuck knows. It's a weird little, I don't know, little bug creature thing. Uh, what else have we got here? A tundra, warrior fly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I want to play this. Oh, I need to play a warrior fly. The grey. The grey. What like a wolf? Uh, it's a, uh, versus Liam Neeson. Guy with a long tail by the looks of it. And uh, skunkla. Oh, skunk person. He plays skunk. Man. So just for the races alone, it's worth a play. And the types of adventures in this is sort of like... it's, it's uh, I suppose it's focused a lot on fighting and bloody violence, right? Absolutely. Um, it, yeah, it, it's, 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 the battles are designed to feel rushed, so mistakes are going to happen, and you've got to just go with it. It's kind of fast-paced. You can do mass battles. It's, it's a role-playing game, but it's also a bit of a war game as well, I think. So you were telling me, like, during... We had a little break earlier. You were saying um, that basically the idea of it is that you're supposed to... The, is, is, the advice it gives for the DM is that you're supposed to, every, like you said, feel rushed. So mm-hmm. every time the player fucks up, you're supposed to go, no, sh- shut up. It's happened. Moving on. Yeah. We're moving on. Yeah, yeah. It's happened. You've tripped over. You a can't rock. go back shut and up. pick that up now. It's too tough yeah, shit. Somebody's just got to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it, and it makes it quite intense. Mm-hmm. It, I think, yeah, like you said, it pushes mistakes and entertainment. That sounds fucking awesome, it man. It seems brilliant. Um, it's, yeah, so, so, so it's, it's like it's, bl- it's bloody battles, mm-hmm. weird races. Killing each other. You can do mass battles has... of fucking warrior flies. You can imagine the warrior flies just come out from their shit palace. That sounds amazing. So I, that is our official 2017 winner for best name of a game, and um, also best race. Should we go with that? Best ra- yeah, that, best yeah, race for it, Cyclops it's the, Turtle. It's the fr- <laughs> yeah. Should we say we go for C- Cyclops Turtle or Warrior Fly? Oh, I don't know. Cat. No, I don't. I did like. Well, I do like Catling as well, but I, I feel, feel Yo, like. Yo, Catling. If- what's up? It's been done, man. It's been done. Right, we're going Warrior Fly. That wins 2017 Best Race Award. Sure, it's not Cyclops. Actually, though, no. Right? Should we award an award for Best Race? No, what about Adventure Beetle? Do you know what? I, you know, I'm going to award it to Ch- the Chinese, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to award it to the 100 metres. Good. <laughs> saved it. You saved it. Now it's not racist. All right, moving on. So, yeah, go, go play Brutal. Big bad ball busting bloody battles. Yay! Right now, and that's free. Um, we we'll put a link in the, in we'll the show link. notes. We we'll put it somewhere. We we'll put it somewhere, mate. Fucking, I'll put it in a bottle. We're playing that shit. We're playing that shit, though. Yeah, we we definitely are. That's that one of the awesome. games when you just have a few, like 
do a load of shots and then just go right go <laughs> and then and then the barkeeper's like what are you doing you're out in a club and you you're like well, commanding my warrior flies what's it look like yeah <laughs> you and they go get out <laughs> in a land far beyond your imagining adventure waits and down beneath you will find things that you never dreamed of seeing goblins orcs treasures mountains of gold Will you be brave enough to delve deep and beat the final boss of the dungeon? This is Adventure Calls, available for forty nine ninety nine ninety nine. Available at all good retailers. Look, we know prank calls are stupid. We know they're pathetic. They're immature. But we've done one. We've done another one. It's been a while. It has been a while. We were actually going to do one last episode for the Halloween episode that we did in April. <laughs> we tried um, really fucking hard. But um, everything was closed, man. It was a bank holiday. It was, yeah. Everything so, was shut. Um, everything was shut. So we, we had a great idea. Well, Nick had a great idea for one last week where we were going to call up some uh, sort of either homeopathy place or like Chinese medicine place and tell them that we turned into a vampire for the vampire episode. Yep. So all I've done is basically I modified that and changed it to werewolf and I, ch- and I called up a Chinese medicine place <laughs> this morning. So uh, here it is. Um, hello. Um, yeah, I was just wondering if 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 I, there, I've got a, a certain illness, and I was wondering if you if there was something that you could do to help me out. Do you do Chinese medicine there? Yes, we do. Ah, oh, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's just I've got um I've got lycanthropy. Do you know it? Oh, sorry. Can I say again? Lycanthropy. Lycanthropy. Yeah. Basically, what happens is every time there's a full moon, I transform into a wolf. And I don't know why oh, that's yeah. happening. Do you have any like herbal me- remedies for that? Yes, can you give me one more time? Is it L Y C A N T H R O Y? O P Y. Yeah, and every time if it goes to a full moon, then you will like we act to a wolf. No, I t- something like that. No, I turn into a wolf, like like I transform into a wolf man. You transform into a wolf man. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it, I, I, I can appreciate. Do, do you understand how that would that would kind of be a little bit worrying? Because I, 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 I look after two cats, you know, and every night I get more and more worried that I'm gonna eat them. I don't want to eat oh, my yeah. cats. I love my cats. I don't want to eat them. Yeah, I totally understand. So you gotta help me. I bet you gotta have some sort of cure there. Okay, yeah. Sorry, we can't. We, we, we can't uh, help at all this kind of no. uh, uh, symptoms. Yeah, what's it, what's your name? That. What's your name? You've got to help me out. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Nobody can help me. I, I, I rang my mum. She thinks I'm mad. I rang my dad. He don't love me no more. Maybe you can find your uh, nearest NHS to see if they can help. Who? The NHS. NHS? The NHS yeah. don't want to know. I went to my doctor. He laughed at me. He said, he said, get out. He said, you're an idiot. He said, I've got a silver bullet for you. Can you believe oh, I'm that? So, I'm, I'm so sorry about that. I'm so sorry. I know. I know. It made me cry. I went home. I wrote a poem about it. Do you want to hear it? Yeah, I'm so sorry about it. Yeah. Okay. And, and you know what? You know what the worst thing is? The worst thing is I rang my girlfriend up. I rang up my bubs. I said to her, I said... Yeah, I said, I said, I can't, I can't, my heart, I got this fire in my heart. And she said, I don't love you no more because you tried to bite me. And to be fair, I did do that. I did try and bite yeah, her. Cause, I'm, but it I'm was so because I... About, I'm so sorry about this. I'm so sorry. Thanks for your call. No, but while we're at it, um, do you have anything for like stress? Uh, sorry, I don't have any suggestions for this. No, but like I could do, I could do with something for stress because I'm feeling a bit stressed out. I'm so sorry. I can't provide any more information about this. Thanks for your call and bye for now. But yeah, so that was her. Um, what She's a woman! Lovely. <laughs> I feel really bad actually. Well, I, there was one I had to delete because a woman genuinely tried to help me because she thought I had psychiatric problems. <laughs> so yeah, I, and I, I felt really bad. It, she was like, I think I need to get you some some help. You should go and see your GP. Definitely you know? see your GP. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So, so that was that. Um, Thanks very much, that lady. She's yep, kind. She was kind. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I did also call some homeopathy places up as well. I called one in that said um, 
Oh no, I probably shouldn't say that. Never mind. <laughs> I'll bleep that out. Don't worry. Uh, right. Anyway, they said I, I literally said I might be a werewolf, and they said, "Come in. I think we can help you with that." <laughs> Fucking hell. I, I I don't think it was usable because it wasn't very funny. But literally, if that doesn't say something about homeopathy, I don't know what does. <laughs> what if you just got a razor? <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's like, "Come in. I, I can help you." With I'll that. shave you. And she's like standing there with a silver bullet. <laughs> <laughs> oh mate she's a, maybe homeopathy is real you might she's quite a literally dodge the bullet there a werewolf hunter yeah exactly I just come in and I'm like hi I'm about the uh, werewolf and she's like boom <laughs> it just drops the floor getting dragged away well the penguins have made it and they're going up against the golden knight interesting the penguins have outflanked the golden knight they're uh, pushing in with a rear attack he is now caught both sides classic pincer manoeuvre just the way the world war 2 soldiers were done in we need to make an apology. Yep, we need to get dark for a minute again because we need we need to fucking bring up the fucking shitty subject to the Patreon once again. Because oh, I don't know why we ever fucking. Okay, so a f- couple of weeks back, it got our Patreon got stolen mm-hmm. by a guy calling himself the Patreon Highwayman. After we'd got it back for a week. Yep, we got it back for a week from the homeless gnome. And now, last week, we hired... Well, Nick, you, you really fucking <laughs> fucked up. Yeah. Because <gasps> Nick have... hired a guy called Rockford Magnum, a private investigator, um, a very cheap private investigator, <laughs> to um, get the Patreon back. Now, we found out that this guy, all he'd been doing is spending our hard-earned cash down the pub. In the local fucking pub. Since the last time we saw him, he said he was going to buck up his ideas and get investigating... Get on the... the case. No, what was his words? I'll crack the case by tomorrow. Yeah, that's what he said. We have seen hide nor hair of him <laughs> in two fucking weeks. I've been on holiday, come back expecting some I kind of him. fucking progression and nothing's happened. I haven't seen... I've called him. I've called him maybe 20 times. I've, I've even tried emailing him. <laughs> I'm bothered called, with that. I, I, I there, nothing. Nothing. I'm willing to bet he's still in that fucking pub. If he's down... I swear to God, if he's down the road... We, I'm going to be fucking furious. Why did we think to look there earlier? Well, uh, to be honest, I didn't want to go there on my own, mate. Because I'm, I, I, I can't, I can't. Tr- you're gonna have to hold me back. Because I'm Shit. furious, mate. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking wail on him. I've been out of the country, so I've, yeah. Fuck. All right, let's go down there. Let's go Find down the pub right now and let's see what he's doing with our money. Because he, he's supposed to be getting our Patreon back, and exactly. he's not. So let's go down there right now. Come on, get your coat. Right. Excuse me, mate. Have you seen a like a fat New York detective? Um, Probably eating a steak dinner. Usually likes to drink. He says he, cigar on the go. Cigar on the go. Probably drinking a bit like beer or something. What, you mean uh, you mean him over there? <sighs> yeah, that's him. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, mate. Cheers, mate. Rockford. Oh fuck. Get up. Get up, mate. We got. We need a word with you, mate. Uh, yeah. Listen, I was in here because I've investigated the lead. What? What fucking lead? What are you talking about? That was two lead? weeks ago. You, you, s- you were in here two weeks ago. You said you was going for steak and then you was going to no, 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 crack no, 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 the no, no. fucking case. Listen, that was your listen. words. No, no, no. I know what it looks like. I know it looks like I've been <gasps> drinking in here for two weeks, but I wasn't. The Patreon highwayman, he was last seen in this pub. He comes in here, I swear to God. You've I- been here two weeks and you've not seen him? <gasps> what? No, I haven't yet. But there's a rumour... That he's coming in here today. What's this, a fucking boozy stakeout? No, I know what it looks like, but I swear to God, somebody told me he was coming in here today. I swear to God. And no, I'm swaying like this because I'm trying to get a good look at the situation. I'm not drunk. You're so oh, for full fuck's sake, you're a dickhead, Rockford. You're taking our money and you're taking us for a ride. You're fired, all right? You're off the case. No, no, guys, there's no need to do that. There's no need to do... Oh, okay, down I go. Oh, for fuck. Oh, okay, right, God. he's gone. Next time, I think you look after the investigators. Yeah, yeah, I'll do the hiring Sorry, next time, mate. Mate, Because <laughs> that, he's a joke. Shit. Look at him, down there. Do you want a beer? Yeah, yeah, I'll have a beer. Uh, I'll have a Guinness, please, mate. Okay, two parts of Guinness, please. Coming up, mate. Wait a minute, who the fuck is that? Tis I, the Patreon Highwayman. That- that's, that's fucking him. Drinks all around. I've stolen a few more Patreons today. Wait a minute, it's you! Oi! Give us back our Patreon! Okay, never mind, the offer's off the table. See you later, everyone! Come back here, you! Come here, you fucking dick! Goodbye! Wait, get after him! Ryan <laughs> Reeves! Away! Yeah! Oh, for fuck's sake! Who the 
fuck comes to a pub on a horse? <laughs> what was it called? Ryan Reeves. <laughs> it's a pretty weird name for a horse. <laughs> oh, man. He was so close. Joel, Wait a minute. Joel, Do you know what this means? Rockford was right. Yeah. Shit. What the fuck is going on here, man? Welcome to the Chamber of Challenges. Chamber of Challenges. The Chamber of Challenges. Chamber of Challenges. The Chamber of Challenges. <laughs> wow, that was fucking weird. Uh, Alright, well, this is the Chamber of Challenges, and... Today I've got a challenge for you, mate. It's called Mouse Guard or Mouse Nah, mate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... So is that how I have to answer them then? Yeah, so basically, it basically, yes. Um, okay. I've been... Well, no, it doesn't really work. But, um, yeah, so I've been researching a bit of Mouse Guard recently, mate, because uh, Mouse Guard is a role-playing game where you play as mice living oh, in a me- medieval era. It is a game that I've just ordered, and uh, as such, I've been doing a lot of research into it. And so I got a bit burnt by it. Yeah, a little bit. So for this quiz, uh, <laughs> on each question, you have to tell me which is the real thing from the Mouse Guard universe, kind of. Um, yeah, so basically, question one, which is the real war in the Mouse Guard universe? Number one, is it the frog fight of 1241? Is it the cricket conflict of 1356? Is it the Badger Battle of 1153? Is it the Weasel War of 1149? Oh, man. Some mice. Let's have a think. What, was there a cat battle, did you say? It's the Frog Fight, the Cricket Conflict, the Badger Battle, or the Weasel War. I'm going to say Badger Battle. Unfortunately, Nick, you are wrong. Oh. It was the Weasel War. The Weasel War. Question two. Which is the real Amazon review for the Mouse Guard RPG. Now, this is a very short review that I found. Good. Is it? It's good, but too many mice. Two stars. <laughs> yeah. It's just D&D for mice. One star. <laughs> four mice. Yeah, you just four put mice. Some mice they start playing. It's just D&D for mice. One star. <laughs> Shit. One star. <laughs> fuck off. Just fuck off. Three stars. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit <laughs> I mean all of those are pretty bad but one of those is a genuine Amazon review for, for Mouse Guard RPG <laughs> fuck off just fuck off I love that it says that in the unfortunately not the real one the actual real one is it's just D&D for mice <laughs> one star <laughs> four mice I think it's pretty impressive they, they, someone's they, made a game for mice they looked at it and thought this is four mice this isn't for humans you idiots this is just for mice <laughs> okay Question three. This is a bit of a weird one. So, the character. This is from uh, from the Mouse Guard universe. The character Kenzie is known for his wit and brain power, often putting it to great use, meaning that a great many guards mice owe their lives to him. However, there is a scene that is intended to make this character more balanced, where after a party and many ales, he made some advances on the healer Abigail, and didn't seem to understand the word no and later wo- woke up regretting his actions and contemplated taking his own life by annoying a bear so that it would destroy him. <laughs> However, the publishers deemed this to be too dark for a comic that was meant to be for kids and adults alike and requested the scene be cut from the book. Oh. Mouse Guard or Mouse Nah, mate? I think that's Mouse Guard. No, that's Mouse Nah, mate. Oh. But it sounds plausible, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it totally does. But I made it up. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> In Mouse Guard, mice are not the only playable race. One of these is also a playable race. Weasel, Vole, Big Weasel, Shrew, none of the above. Weasel. None of the above, mate. Oh, it's a trick. I tricked a weasel you. War. He tricked me. I'm the real weasel. <laughs> that's, that's what happened there. <laughs> I'm the weasel. Shit. None of the above. I'm not doing very well. No, you're not. No. Mouse, nah, mate. <laughs> Mouse, nah, mate. Which of these is a real skill in Mouse Guard RPG? River Observer. Grass Ponderer. Weather Watcher. Tree Regarder. (laughs) I really want it to be Tree Regarder. Yeah, I'm going for that. It is Weather Watcher. (laughs) Weather Watcher. (laughs) 
<laughs> I, yeah. no. I guess it's it's like for predicting weather patterns because think about how big a, a one rain is. What to a mouse is one grain of rain. One grain of rain to a mouse is like that's like a big rain, isn't it? That's a lot. So like, if you get hit with one rain, that's <laughs> gonna be a big rain, big rain on you. So don't like look out. Don't be it by rain. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I guess whoever watches that's the guy that just sits in the little tree like looking out and, you know, I want to play mouse guards so much so do I it looks awesome <laughs> it does yeah so I've ordered that but what happened was there was a bit of a complication because I I, I, I got a fraudly fra- fraudly orderly so annoying so that is um, bloody mouse guard or mouse nah mate, mate. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that Nick. I did that was a lot of fun I'm looking forward to playing a weather watcher yeah, <laughs> or a tree regarder. I just love animals. We can invent. So I can't wait to be able to play a mouse. Yeah, that'd be cool. Like, yeah, yeah. being a mouse. It's just gonna be so much fun. It's just a shame you can't be a big weasel. Big weasel. But you can fight weasels. In the future, you will be able to send a letter from anywhere on the planet. This is the future. This is the electro letter. This is Electro Letters, ASMR edition. Hello, and welcome to Electro Letters. You're in a bath. Uh, um, get the suds and just... Oh, the, the candle goes on. <laughs> oh, God, it's fallen in. You, you're now on fire. Uh, how is the water on fire? That shouldn't work like that. You're drowning on fire. Oh, my God. Call, somebody call the fire brigade. Oh, no, the electricity's gone off. <laughs> I hope this is relaxing. You just close your eyes. And die. And die. Just, just die quietly. <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> Disclaimer, we don't want anybody to die. No, we don't. No, no. not today. ASR. So this is Electro Letters where we... ASMR. ASMR. I don't know what it stands for, but um, yeah, we take your letters and we turn them into, into real sound. Which is then synthesised through intertubesque shit and then we are <laughs> yeah exactly that um yeah so i'll get cracking so uh, we've had a, a question in from the one and only the current holder of, of best damn goblin game going 2017 well and no he's, he's gonna have it for the whole year <laughs> exactly and we wanted to give an honorable mention to this guy it is richard walcott of course and we're talking about free games today he mm-hmm. he owns one owns one of them he wrote one of the best free he games gave the on the world planet. one of them yeah yeah saga of the goblin horde which is a great free game all about playing a goblin and uh letting loose and cutting free and having some good old goblin fun one and the best controlling games, yeah. some minions as well which is fucking awesome fun so go and check that out immediately it's that good you should stop this podcast yeah, what are you doing listen to this you <laughs> idiot get out you playing that and get listen to this the game. shit anyway what does he want so Richie says free RPGs are often ignored overlooked or dismissed out of hand based on the assumption that if they were any good they wouldn't be free most podcasts game listings review sites etc focus on commercial games and those games can also afford to pay for marketing uh, so they get a lot more exposure what sort of things could a free game developer do to attract your attention and interest to make you want to talk about the game on your podcast uh, and run it for your group? Do you know what? Um, I feel like uh, we, with our podcast, we will talk about something just if we think it's good. Yeah. Um, with with a we're not great... corrupted by anything or anyone. Yes, because we're not a pair of cunt. Well, we are. But... No, we are. No, we're, but we, we don't care. We're a different. Bra- <laughs> we're a different type of. We just don't give a shit. If it's good, we play it. We like it. Yeah, it? exactly. Yeah. But um, I think uh, you know. But give with, anything with, a chance, though. With we? regular guys, with regular pods, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like what you want to do um, to 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 impress people, I guess, in in air quotes, you know, to to is to. Um, and I feel like this is one of Saga of the Goblin Horde's strengths, is to go for a pr- uh, professional layout. What, mm-hmm. what, because what you need to do if you want to compete with the big boys is to do what they do, if not better, mm-hmm. but to the same level. Yeah. And how is that measurable when you're dealing with something that, that let's call it what it is, is an art form? Mm-hmm. You know, you, you, can't, you can't just measure it, but you can... Um, do it in terms of the way, in terms of the way that it looks. In Saga of the Goblin Horde, the layout is is cracking, and that is professional uh, in terms of the way it looks and and things like that. And the way it's written as well, the actual um, wording of things and and the way it's professionally written, it sort of is very easy to understand. And that is something that a lot of things that aren't professionally published struggle to do. Yeah. 
And I think that's because they don't have people like, uh, you know, professional editors and a lot of people criticising it and, and sticking their oar in maybe, you know, and, and things like this uh, that, that are helping them along with that process, you know. Um, they, they only have their friends telling them that it's great the whole time, you know. Yeah. And it's it's so hard to get out there and, and to, to have people giving you honest, decent criticism. Feedback, yeah, so and you can, you know, make it better. Improve it, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And, and that's that's what I think is hard. I think that you need to, for, to get people to notice it and to, to give it the actual proper recognition it des- deserves. It, it's got to look it, like a game. It's got to look like a real game. And mm-hmm. I know that sounds like, like a really shitty, harsh thing to say, because it should just be based on what it is, not what it looks like and its outer appearance. But, but a lot of people will dismiss it. People are shallow. If it doesn't look very exactly. good. The the Harry Potter RPG, for instance, doesn't look the best on in the world. It's just a it's just like a, basically a fucking word document. But I didn't give a shit about that. Um, but unfortunately, uh, your average punter, your average regular person, is shallow, and I think that that's you need to. Or if it's someone that's only ever played these big, glossy, highly published um, and highly produced books, and they're used to this kind of standard, they just mm-hmm. sort of dismiss it out of hand before even looking getting past the title. It's and pathetic, it's but yeah. that's what people are like. Yeah, and I think that people need to. Uh, if you're if you're publishing something that that you're doing yourself, uh, you need to bear that in mind. And and everyone's guilty of it. We all are. Mm-hmm. You look at something, you see a shitty illustration in there and you go oh, I don't know don't know about that you know um, and it's it's pathetic it yeah, really is it and is. I'm, I'm you know I've got over that now mm-hmm. <laughs> but I'm sure there was a point at some point in my life where unless unless it was Wizards, Wizards of the Coast I didn't want to fucking know yeah. which is sad but um, but look how much fun and and we've had since we started um, opening branching up. out and playing yep. you know all sorts more of stuff more people need to do that but, Definitely. but they, they won't because they're shallow Second question from Rich. Uh, do you ever wear odd pairs of socks? I am right now. I'm wearing one star. I don't Wars think I've ever sock. seen you wear a matching pair of socks, if I'm honest with you. No, so. I, I just don't, man. It's well, Life's too short. I'm wearing one Star Wars sock. I'm wearing one other Fuck sock. Fuck the man. Fuck the man. Don't ever tell me what to do, George right. Lucas. I'm not wearing the matching socks. <laughs> um, I generally do. Um, What's wrong with you? Sometimes I don't know. Don't care, really. You call yourself <laughs> Nick Lamley. And you're going around wearing matching socks. I don't know, man. I just, I just, I remember when you used to be about the music. I oh, know. You changed, know. Changed, man. <laughs> you changed, man. Uh, and lastly, Richard finishes with, um, and don't forget to mention free RPG a day. It's on the 17th of June, so it's still a way off, but it's a great, uh, it's a great fit for the topic. No, no, yes. no. We're not mentioning that. <laughs> no way are we mentioning that. Not in a million years, mate. It's not happening. Um, RPG a day. It's free RPG every day, isn't it? No, you mentioned it. You idiot. <laughs> we said we weren't mentioning it. Sorry, mate. 17th of June. Go check that out. Thank you very much, Rich, as always. Thank you, Richard. It's very good to hear from you and keep the questions coming in. Yeah. We like you, despite the fact that you are pure evil. And a goblin. And he's, yes, he is. <laughs> That's why he's so good at writing goblin literature. He's because part, he's, he's part of it's goblin. just his life. <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> he's just writing about every day. Uh, next one is Manners. Manuel Sams. Uh, if you could order anyone, fictional or real, to strip at your next party, who would it be? You know, this is this is a tough question, Manuel, because you have given us a, a question that could very easily veer into sexism. Dun, dun, dun. So, Nick, go. Jessica Rabbit. Oh, you idiot. You've gone for an answer that you can get away with because she's a cartoon. Yeah. Oh, and she's, but now I can't and do she's that. Up. Do you know what? I'm going to go for... Um... Oh, no, I'm not going to go for that. I can't go for that. No, no I was going to go for I was going to go for Sila from uh, Gundam, but I, I I can't confirm what age she is. So I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave that. Leave it there. Yeah, because because an anime you can never tell. You don't even know. That's true. Because like it's, until it's, someone prints it, and you're like, ah, shit. It's entirely possible. Like because they they look the like whatever age, but then then like it'll, it, they'll print something out and it'll be like. Sailor is a 12 year old oh, and you're just like what the fuck is wrong with you <laughs> yeah. why do they look like they're 25 then <laughs> come on yeah it's ridiculous I know they, they always do that in like all the Final Fantasy games like in Final Fantasy 10 I think it was Riku in um, our version is is 18 in the story and mm. then in the Japanese version she's 13 <laughs> Like, but all they did was change the number when they put, ported it to the west <laughs> but she's like wearing like a bikini or whatever it's like fucking disgusting they just put a 3 next to the 3 and they made it an 18. Yeah. Job but done. I'm going to cut all of that out. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, Manners. Thank you, Manuel. Uh, see you soon. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Next question's from the big Morg himself. The talking Morg. The talking Morg. <laughs> it is none other than Morgan Ellis. Yeah. Um, and he asks, what's the best character death you've had in role playing in a role playing game? Oh boy! <laughs> yeah, I think your I think yours was the one that happened yesterday. Yeah, I was just about to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay, so a little bit of background required here. In Vampire, um, if you get incapacitated, that is when you, uh, let's just say, you know, run out of HP when mm-hmm. you've taken enough wounds to, to basically have no wounds left. Um, you're down. You get incapacitated. You go into torpor, right? Which means you go into a deep sleep deep for a while. Deep sleep state. That yeah. is what happens to happened to Nick's character yesterday. But um, if you take aggravated wounds and then you get all your wounds done, you die forever. That's called final death. Yep. So what happened? Because you got incapacitated. So basically, um, poor Alfonso. He got shot in the leg. And um, then shot in the face, which incapacitated me. So I just slumped in the <laughs> back of the car in torpor. So with a di- in, in a deep sleep with my jawbone just pretty much hanging from my from my head. And then um, I think a grenade got thrown in from a grenade launcher from a biker gang that was uh, coming down to the town. And it blew up fire everywhere, which is aggravated damage. And my poor incapacitated corpse died, turned into dust and fucking faded away. Yeah, and then um, times. But you wanted your spirit to say one last one thing. last line, and because he was a hot dog salesman, what did he say? I'm a dog. <laughs> so it's like the weirdest line ever. <laughs> it was bloody funny. Yeah, it so was good. That was aggravated. poor Alphonse. Aggravated damage. So that was a very good, uh, very good character death. Yes. Don't I, I, I think my my most memorable one was probably um, oh. my mine was probably in your zombie campaign actually because um, I ended with a fight between. Oh my god! Yeah between players because I, I got in a fight with a bunch of other NPCs didn't I because yeah. my character was a bit of a nutcase so I, I would say I'd probably say that because that was pretty I, fucking yeah, mental it was, fight, to be fair. it was a fight between me and a bunch of other players which I enjoyed quite a lot so um, yeah that was that was good fun because I, I remember I drove what was it a lawn mo- no it was a moped into the front garden into the fence tried and to it, ram the fence yeah. but because it's only a moped didn't really go well so <laughs> then you had a big death fight with, yeah, like, you had a bleach bleach fight you threw bleach at bleach one of the and players ammonia, I mean, and, yeah, and yeah. there was gas everywhere and I was shooting guns it was fucking crazy was that was yeah that was a good character I think it got chucked out at the end it was quite dramatic mm. anyway yeah. it was yeah, great that was good. That was fucking good awesome one. that was a good one <clears> that was yeah, really good I enjoyed that um I think, yeah, that was that was probably one of my favourites. Yeah, that was fucking awesome. Thank you very much, Morgan Ellis. Cheers, mate. Cheers, bud. Uh, next question's coming from uh, the jolliest GM around. Oh, God, Jess. You've put plus one next to him. Does he, does he get I put us? plus one next to his name because I copy and pasted it from Google+. Plus. <laughs> <laughs> Not because he gets a plus one bonus on his name. He does. Okay, cool. He does for being jolly. Okay, but there you go, yeah. <laughs> right, so he asks, favourite RPG setting, favourite place where you and your mates get together to play? Um, ultimately, like, our group, we don't really tend to play... Um, published stuff. Published settings. Settings, at, yeah. Really, I mean, at the moment, I'm, we, I'm really enjoying Warhammer, but I'm still, like, you know, a, a massive noob to it, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean... In comparison to some of the people that we play with, who who or who've been playing it for years or know it really they well, know their you know, shit, yeah. we're noobs. I, mm-hmm. I would I do want to say that because I love it so much. But the fact of the matter is, is that I barely fucking know it. Yeah. Right, by you know, what people's. we've experienced so far is amazing. But yeah, yeah we don't even haven't even scratched you know, the surface. Yeah. So I mean, what what would tough. yours be out of all the ones that we've played? Because it's going to be something self authored. Yeah. Or, or something that that nobody's going to know, but. Well, I've got to say, one of the ones I enjoyed the most was the Alice in Wonderland. It was, year, it was nearly two years ago now. <clears throat> but it was the Alice in Wonderland you, um, one that we did. That was hilarious. I don't think I don't laugh so much. Yeah, I actually do have that. That is... I'm just getting off my shelf. So that is... Um, this, this is kind of a setting book, but it's more like a, a dungeon crawl. But mm-hmm. we spent a long time in it because it is quite a big uh, dungeon. But... This is um, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons Fantasy Adventure Module Dungeon Land. So this is an adventure. It's not necessarily a campaign setting, but what I did for this is um, I converted this over to Pathfinder, and uh, this is for characters uh, levels 9 to 12. So I converted it to Pathfinder and then made it an adventure crawl for characters, what would have been like 1 to 5? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Instead, so it was a con- like a conversion and uh, a hack basically. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. 
Um, and then I expanded it and made it not not bigger, but they sort of had to spend a lot more time in it. So it wasn't a straightforward go here, go to the end. That it was, was loads more, like, more to it. Yeah, wasn't you had there? to go here, then go back here, yeah. and then go and see this guy and all of this. So they spent a lot more time there. So it could have been considered maybe a mini campaign, yeah, no, yeah. more an adventure. It's like a campaign a within a campaign. Really, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, that was uh, yeah, that was the Alice it was in Wonderland. Hilarious. And, I put a bit more story to it, where it's like a, a dark version, a bit like the American McGee's Alice games, if you've ever played those. Um, but yeah, so it was a really, really fun campaign, that one. Um, what about you? I don't know, man. Like, I want to say, I have all the campaigns that, that, that I've played, um, setting-wise. I, I think one of the ones I had the most fun playing, I don't want to say that my favourite setting was one that I did, but um, <laughs> no, hear me out here, because we, we when we played uh, the GURPS campaign, uh, that that was one of the most fun that I've had. Yeah. And the reason that I like that setting so much, one that I made, yes, I sound like a dickhead, was because um, I enjoyed so thoroughly uh, having a bunch of players let loose and do what the fuck they wanted. Yeah. Um, I really, really enjoyed making it because what I did is I created a big sandbox and it was so much effort, but in the end, I found it so worth it because all I did in the end was was I was able to just sit back and it allow people... It played itself, didn't it? Pretty yeah, much, yeah. And, and I just went, okay, you go here. All I needed to do was find the right map and then, and then you guys could just let loose and do what the fuck you wanted. Mm-hmm. That was it. I was just like, okay, well, you're we here now. bounties, didn't we? So we was picking bounties up doing yep. planet hopping all the bounties were already done all the items were already done oh, all of this all of that so it was already done and it was in a GURPS campaign and mm-hmm. for me that was one of my favourite settings I've ever played and I, it's not because I think it's great or I did a great job but it's because what happened it's what happened and <laughs> yeah. because I had fun playing it with you guys yeah. that, that was why absolutely um, it was fantastic yeah that was great um, but if I'm picking one that I didn't make I would have to say uh that I'm really, really enjoying my brother's fantasy Cthulhu hack that he's done at the moment. What I'm going to try and do is I'm going to see if I can get him to uh, give me some of his shit so I can post it online. Because nice. the maps he's done are awesome, and uh, I'll see if I can get him to share That'd some of those. That'd be awesome, yeah. Because we'll people can use the, those as um, battle maps. Yeah, mate. Yeah. Cheers, uh, Jolly. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, Sealock. Uh, Sealock? JC Lock. Sealock. Sealock. Sea Green. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next question is coming from Matt Stark. Yo, yo, Matt. Matty. Hey. Hey, it's my name's Matt. Matt Stark. Right, um, Matt Stark asks, when creating an adventure or setting for your players, what process do you use? Do you have a checklist that helps define certain aspects you want to see come to function? If so, can you share it with us? Yo, 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 it's time for a pretentious answer, motherfuckers. <laughs> so, <laughs> strap in. Strap in, boys. Uh, yeah, if I'm creating a setting for my friends, I, I tend to find that uh, they want to play something, uh, a genre first and foremost, and then they want a to have a certain feeling second of all. So, for instance, you might have uh, that they want to play a fantasy, and they want to play a grim fantasy. Or they might want to play sci-fi, and they might want to play dystopian sci-fi. So... What I tend to do whenever I create a setting is that I will start obviously with the genre first, or mm-hmm. or the the uh, like overall setting. So it's is it fantasy? Is it sci-fi? Is it horror? Is it romance? Whatever. And then I'll go for the the feeling that they they appear to want first. Is it? Do they want? Do they want comedy? Do they want horror? Do they want this? Do they want that? Do they want uh, dystopia? Whatever. And then I'll try to uh, think about what might create that. So. For example, with the um, with the sci-fi one, um, what um, I suppose everyone really wanted from that was the sense of being bounty hunters in space and being able to to hop from from planet to planet. And I thought, what would really um, bolster that would uh, give that a really unique feel and and a really realistic feel would be if each planet had its own economy. Now, I wouldn't be able to do that in any massive, massive realistic way that would feel. Uh, that, that would be real, but I would be able to make it feel real by making all the items have uh, vastly different costs on different planets, by having a trading system that was relatively simple, kind of like the one you found in 50 Fathoms, 
and by having all the bounties be different depending on where you would get them on different planets. So I had a different list of, di of missions for each planet and each one would have its own maps and things like that. And by doing so, each planet would feel like it had its own economy and its own different problems. And as a result, the flavor of problems you would find on one planet would be completely different to the flavor of problems you would find on another. And the amount of money you would get for, for solving a problem on one planet would be completely different to the other. And thus they would feel like they had a completely different living, breathing economy. And thus it would feel like you were really going from one ecosystem to another. And that was how I did it. But it didn't really have a gigantic ecosystem that I sat and mapped out. It just felt like it. So I start, first of all, with a genre and then with a feeling. And that's how, basically, I do it. I try to make a game feel a certain way. You don't actually have to sit down and make it be a certain way by doing every tiny, minute detail. And I feel like that is a thing that a lot of newbie DMs suffer with. They try to go into too much detail. And as a result, they get bogged down and spend years making details that nobody will ever give a fuck about and actually won't matter when you could just, you know, go with go with the general feeling instead. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Nice. Good answer, mate. <laughs> That's basically it. If, if everyone else has a different way of doing it, fine. I'm not poo-pooing anyone or, or, or trying to say that anyone else's way of doing things is wrong. That is just how I do it. And if you like doing it a different way, then that is completely up to you. It's very diplomatic, I feel. No, but it's true though. It's yeah, true. No, it's I mean, true. Yeah, some people, some people have you know different methods and stuff. Well, because I know that the um, yeah, every uh, I've played. A like lot Matt was of just asking what you do though. And what exactly, I do, and I've played a lot of people's so. other settings, and I think they're fucking amazing. I just I and they approach it in a completely different way to me and get great results. I mm -hmm. just I I probably get shit results. I just got <laughs> it's just that that's the way I approach it. No, it's fine, mate. Right, we've got another question from Terry Anson. Hey, Terry Han Terry Hanson. It's Terry you know what? I've only just thought of that. And he is handsome as well. So there you go. So it works on two levels. Two bloody levels. Because it's his name, right? And it sounds like handsome. Brilliant. It so works. Terry Handsome. Male model. Male model of the year. <laughs> 2017. <laughs> Official award. Tip tables up to us. Mm -hmm. Right. So Terry Handsome says... Well, this weekend I'll be working, serving people large amounts of moderately priced American diner-style food, all the while pimping myself out for monetary representations of gra graciousness for services rendered. So he's working, bless him. Uh, whenever I work, I mop the restaurant after close. Something about the physical act of mopping frees up my brain to be its most creative. Do either of you have certain acts or rituals to spark your creativity? Yeah, um, I've got a really weird one, man. Because whenever I do writing or campaign stuff, I always put the World of Warcraft soundtrack on, and it's the same same one every time. And I don't know why I do it, <laughs> but I can't. I literally can't start writing unless it's a I ritual now. Yeah, I, I, I honestly I can't, and for some reason I just can't do it. I can't do it. I've Nothing tried, else. I've tried to put other music on. Doesn't and I'm, work. I'm sick of that fucking music, and I hate it. But I, d I don't know why. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can't do it. I don't know why. It's, oh man, you're locked into a a vicious cycle there. Yeah, and it's it's like infuriating for me now. It's good music, but like I I can't stand it anymore, and it's just it's just become a ritual for me now. And like every so every time I'm doing campaign maps, every time I'm doing uh, writing for anything, I just if I sit down and I do it, and that music isn't on, it doesn't come out. And I've tried putting anything else on, even just like relaxing stuff, like yeah. fucking you know whale song or some shit. I, 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 don't work, don't work. If it's something else, oh man, that's that's my ritual. And it used to be, it used to be until recently that I would uh, smoke cigarettes. But now, now I've given up that as well. I find it even harder to get into the zone. Shit, man. So I've, I've started drinking chamomile tea instead. Go for it, mate. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, that's like supposed to be equally as relaxing as smoking cigarettes. So I don't even have that anymore. What do I have? I've got nothing. You've got nothing. <laughs> yeah. It's fucking You've ridiculous. got no vice in your Just life. Just sitting there rocking back and forward, not smoking fags, listening to the World of Warcraft soundtrack. Just going, trying to write something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Scribbling on a bit of paper. Yeah, ah. just like, campaign notes. <laughs> to page one. It's just a fucking kid's drawing. The party is sent mad by the World of Warcraft soundtrack. Anyone for Camomile too? 
Roll D10 to see if you drink the tea. Oh, shit. Uh, when do I uh, when am I most creative uh, driving relaxes me I find driving quite easy so I think a lot when I'm wanking <laughs> no <laughs> think Work. a lot when I'm wanking think a lot when I'm wanking uh, no working really to be honest with you mate because something like yeah my, my job could be pretty mundane so I kind of go into autopilot and just have a think about stuff games you'd like to try out yeah I used to do that, like that. yeah yeah, when when I was working at my last job, I used to I used to think about about campaigns a lot, and then and now I, now I don't really do that anymore. So I sort of do it when when I'm about to go to sleep, and then I don't sleep. <laughs> oh yeah, I do that as well. <laughs> I hate that when you start thinking about good things, and then you can't. You know, like, ah, Pathfinder. I could be going to sleep, but, but no, I'm just going to think about shit ideas. in bed. Yeah, yeah. So like, I wonder if in GURPS I could. Oh no, no, no. Go to sleep, but, but made maybe. RPG. <laughs> oh yeah, God. God damn RPGs! What's wrong with you? Why? Why am I? I, I wake at night thinking about this kind of bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know, mate. It's just ridiculous. Can't answer, can't answer that question for you. Yeah. You know what? Fun. Actually, I'd be really, really interested to know. And I know that uh, all, all the fucking stupid shit on the internet. All people do this. Comment below and let us know your thing. But I genuinely mean it. <laughs> uh, comment below and let us know if there are any rituals that get you in the zone when yeah, you're when you're doing your creative really interesting one. Because I, I would like to know because I think that World of Warcraft thing's really weird. That's the first time I've ever admitted that to anyone. Actually, <laughs> to anyone, everybody. Yeah, I literally. I, <laughs> there's nobody. I don't think even my wife knows I do that because it is a bit weird. You're going to get that sent to you now. Do, 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 do. Oh, actually, I have an embarrassing story to tell on that front. Before we move on to the next segment, I'll just tell it. Because there was a time before the World of Warcraft soundtrack where it used to be, right? <laughs> this is really embarrassing. Right, where it used to be a, a specific video on YouTube that was the best of Chopin. <laughs> right? And that was what I used to stick on to try and concentrate. It was this one video that was the best of Chopin. It shows Chopin. How, how fucking um, uncultured I am. But... I was in the lunchroom at work right once and um, I was reading a Batman comic and I couldn't concentrate because all of the guys were around me talking and this was in like rush hour of the lunchtime, right? Everyone was talking. I was trying to fucking read Batman comic and everyone was like talking and talking so I thought I'll fucking stick some Chopin on in my ears, right? Yeah. And I just, I, st- I suck it on. I put my earphones in and, and I was like, oh God, uh, everyone was talking. They were still fucking so loud and so I just... I turned it right up right I turned it right up in my ears and I was like they're, they're still talking so loud I can't hear them I can just about hear the music so I turned it right up right up to the full volume to 11 yeah to 11 I can just about hear the music and I'm just like alright it'll do I'll just try to concentrate right trying to drown them out with the music I sit there I'm reading right and I've got I've got the book perched on my knee so that, so that it's like in a good reading position right but I look a little bit pretentious right <laughs> Like I'm reading like a fucking, um, you know, a first edition Charles Dickens or something like that, you know. And and I look ridiculous because I'm reading a Batman comic and, and I'm listening to this music. But nobody could tell I'm listening to the music. Yeah, sure. Except they could. What? The headphones weren't plugged in properly. Oh, no. So it turns out that everyone could see me listening to classical music and reading Batman like a ponce in, in the in the lunchroom. <laughs> whilst, whilst looking at people angrily. Yes. <laughs> oh, boy. I looked like a grade A cunt. <laughs> That's so bad. Big up the shout out. I... What was that? I just went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the shout out section where we want to big up the shout out. So we want to talk about big old Eli Kurtz. Big Eli Kurtz. He's supermodel of su- the year. Nine feet tall. 2017. Yeah. And he is a sexy man. But in addition to that, He's also got the brains of a genius, and he has written a um, he's written a blo- a bloke, a bloke. He's written a little bloke called uh, the Black Bloke. It's called the Black Bloke. Bloke, and, Black bloke. Uh, and blo- you get on the bloody click. No, it's it's called the Blackwood, and it's on the Kickstarter till May the thirtieth. Yeah, and it's on there now. Go uh, Kickstarter. Why, why are we pointing at each Kick- other? It just doesn't work on the radio. Kickstart it. Kickstart it. I'll point no. at, don't you point at me? I'll point at you even harder. <laughs> Right, uh, anyway, it's on Kickstarter now, right? And if you pledge, get this, 25 quid, you can get a physical copy of it, right? What? Tw- I might, might be $25. I might be getting this wrong. We're a bad advertisement. We don't know. We don't. We're not being paid for this. No. So, you know, We've... Eli, this is all about free stuff, this podcast. <laughs> and this is what you get with free stuff. See, this is free advertising. <laughs> this is you okay, get you, you get free e- if for either $25 or, or something. £25, something. you will get a physical copy and a PDF. And I believe that that pledge level is called Knights and Knaves or something like that. Anyway, get a thank you in the book as well. Probably, I don't even know. I know one but of the, the point is yeah. <laughs> the point is is that the Blackwood is all about 
uh, elves and shit in the woods, and they're fighting, right? And then, <laughs> who's that? It's only fucking Jackie Chan. He's oh yeah, nowhere, right? <laughs> oh, but <laughs> <laughs> who's that? Tony Jaw. <laughs> Out of the Blackwood. Right. And, <laughs> right, so that means, guess what? Okay, so what I'm trying to... The thing I'm trying to convey here is that it is... What it is, is Kung Fu meets elves, meets guns. There might not be guns in it. <laughs> we don't know. So go and kickstart that now. Kickstart the shit out of that. Because it's good. I've got to kickstart right. the shit Right. You know what, Eli? If you paid us, we might do a better job of this. All right? But we've got some notes here. Nick, no, what we can have... you find in that book? Because this, you... is, this is a Savage Worlds book. What can you find in there? You can find in this amazing book 18 new edges and 9 new hindrances. Shit off. Yep. Not just that. We've also got 5 new races and 5 new arcane backgrounds. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I thought there were four, but there's actually five new arcane backgrounds. Five of them, yeah. Shit. Coming in with four new setting rules. Right, what yeah. else? Full Shit. of, f- uh, fo- f- <laughs> full of f- folkloric whimsy and whoosha. Whoosha. And Nick definitely is not reading that off a bit of paper. I oh, know, we already said he was. Doesn't matter. So it's got those things. It's got folkloric. It's got waxier. It's got all of that. Yeah. All in one package, right? All of that. And for nine ninety nine ninety nine, it's you can have all got of that. 40 plus new creatures and foes. Are you shitting me up the 40 arse? 40 plus, not just 40, 40 plus. 40 plus. So it's got 41. And not just that. Right. To finish all that off. Yep. It also has a plot point campaign. <gasps> the Way the Elder King. The <laughs> Why can't I read? I'm better off just fucking... Okay, just don't. Just throw the bit of paper away. <laughs> throw it away now. No. Throw it away. It also comes with a plot point campaign. That's worse. It also comes with a plot point campaign, which is the way of the Elder King, complete yes. with savage tales. Okay, what from What's Sonic? Hanging the out the back. No. <laughs> it's the guy from Sonic the Hedgehog. He's just, in it as well. I'm just picturing so, a book with a towel hanging off the back. That's impractical, Eli. Sort that out. Sort that out. For okay. Stars. And also, I wanted to uh, I wanted to give a shout out to something completely unrelated to RPGs. So uh, I, I know what it is, but I want to talk about Osu, right? Which is O S U exclamation mark. This is unrelated to RPGs. It's just a computer game I've been playing this week, and I wanted to shout this out because it is wicked, right? Because I know that Zovia listens to this show, and I know that Eli listens to this show occasionally. So. I wanted to shout out this game because this is one for the artists because this is a game that you play with a graphics tablet, right? And well, this is a bit. For, this is basically a segment of the show for two people, right? <laughs> so just for you two, right? Because I thought it might be weird if I just messaged you on Facebook or whatever. Um, yeah, get this fucking game. It's wicked, right? It's it's basically a rhythm game that you play with a graphics tablet. You can download any song that you want and put it on there. And oh, you it looks play. fun. Yeah, yeah it looks wicked, really man. good. Yeah. I sent Nick a video. I was playing that. Every time we touch, I get this feeling. <laughs> Every time we do the and fly. I was playing that song on it. It was wicked. That's why I texted you and said, "I said I want to play the shit out of that." But, but it, no, you were saying I'm playing, I'm playing that Friday. But you, but you came out, I'm playing Fat Friday, and I thought this was a new game that, that Nick was playing. Fat shit Friday. It was. Oh yeah, I'm playing Fat shit Friday. <laughs> yeah, it's a wicked game. It's, it looks awesome. It's really, yeah. really hard. So yeah, um, play Osu. It's got nothing to do with RPGs, but I'm just yeah. I saw that's, the notes as well. Right? So for anyone, anyone who's got a graphics tablet, check that game out. Osu. Roll dice. Have full sexual intercourse. Play Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. Do a butt sex. Right, this is the world famous outro. Drum roll. Uh, if that wasn't audibly great I don't know what is <laughs> that's the sort of quality you've come to expect Jesus Christ there are people on Patreon that pay for this man oh, and no, we've just, ha- sick, we've just sick, slapping our legs sickens me a bit <laughs> what's bad. wrong about it? that's why we need to get a Patreon back well I was going to say Linda, we can at, least, at least we can message everyone and say sorry yeah exactly oh. <laughs> and, 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 and like tell them to stop paying because oh. you know what they need more leg slapping Oh!
Oh. Can't get enough of that. Right, well, that brings us to the end of another show, and so let's get them some contact details. And how much do they have to pay for these contact details, Nick? They're absolutely free, just like the subject matter of the show. Free contact details. So Free for all of bot, you. Uh, give me the Twitter. Okay, and you can get in contact with us at facebook.com forward slash tabletop T or you can get on contact with us at on contact with us at tabletop twats at gmail.com yes you can do that you can also uh, come see us on google plus because that's where we live also there is a tumblr as well but somebody tried to google that and they found a lot of porn (laughs) yeah so be careful tumblr's dangerous yeah don't go near the the tumblr we just dump dump our podcast on it and run away (laughs) yeah yeah don't go near that that's uh, that's porn apparently I don't know but anyway um, but yeah come see us at google plus nerds international network um well, anyway, the point is, is that we always try to, uh, we always leave you with a thought each week, don't mm-hmm. we? To, um, to don't ponder we? on mind food. Yeah, to, uh, and this is basically just to keep you busy until the next podcast comes out. Uh, something to think about, you know, philosophical questions, philosophical thoughts to keep you going. Um, basically, uh, well, the thought, uh, and basically the thought this week is going to be, is it pronounced digestive biscuit or digestive biscuit? Think about that one. But there is one more thing that we must say before we go. One thing that connects us all. The one thing that binds us. One thing that in the darkness something something finds us. Is the light of goodness in all. Exactly. (laughs) And that thing, (laughs) that that thing, thing, ladies and gentlemen, is... What is it? Chicken McBosh. Good bike. So, so you mentioned like a while back that we need to get to the north to find the necromancers, right? And they'll be in a town called Bjergsenville. That's right. That's what the elves told us anyway. Right. So so back there, how long did they say it was going to be till we get there? Uh, another two days, I believe. <sighs> I know, I know. What can I do? All right. Let me tell you about some more of the, uh, the strange creatures. From <laughs> oh, my... I like this game. Yeah, from my world. Okay. So we, we got a thing called a, a, um, called a lion. Lion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're awesome. <laughs> they're awesome, man. They're, 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 you remember I told you about cats before, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Small small creatures with yeah, yeah, claws. Yeah. yeah, they're like those. Right. right. But they're way bigger. Oh, okay. And they've got big manes. What, like the size of dragons? Mmm, kind of. Like a drake. Like drake-sized. Ooh. Yeah, they're, they're like that, and they've got big manes. But they're like, big, they're like gigantic cats. I see. Yeah, they're awesome. And, and you can find them in, uh, in like, hot places. Yeah, they're really cool. Lions. Dangerous, eh? Yeah, yeah, they're really dangerous. They got big claws. Oh wow. Yeah, big yeah. Claws. Yeah, they're awesome. Yeah. Big claws, eh? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, they're really cool. You ever heard of a bonicon? A bonicon? That's bon- a pretty stupid name. <laughs> <laughs> one of your one of your pussy animals from this world, is it? <laughs> yeah, because so far we've encountered mushroom people, elves, the woodland weedmen. I'm starting to think this world is just like some sort of pussy bitch world. Apart from when we both got the shit beaten out of us by the dwarf brothers. Oh, come on, yeah. The, the, those dwarves, they, uh, those dwarves, that was weeks ago, man. Since then, we've encountered one guy smoking weed and some, some mushroom people who threw a party for us. That was about it. This 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 is nothing, man. We got lions. We got chabs in my world. Chab, what? Anyway, if you if you cross the path of a bodicon, you'd know about it, Sonny Jim. Let me tell you that for nothing. Well, a bonicon is a is a four legged creature that's that's big and big in size, and it has horns on its head and and hooved feet, and it's very very terrifying. It has uh, it actually fires its uh, shit at you, which is flaming and burns. Wait, 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 wait! That sounds ridiculous. Mm-hmm. The, uh, bonicon. <sighs> shit, shit slinger. We call them shit slingers. Well, don't call, don't say that in front of them, though. You, this is this is the most dangerous creature you have in your world. But hands down, the most terrifying, dangerous creature in this. Oh world. come on! It sprays shit at you, Bonacon. <sighs> it's ridiculous, man. If you if you got the shit thrown at you, you wouldn't be saying that. You got beaten up by a dwarf, or so did I. We both got beaten up <laughs> by the dwarves, man. But I reckon I could take a Bonacon. All it does is spray shit at you. I could spray <laughs> shit at something. <laughs> Oh. 
Angel? Shut up, man. Shut up. Yeah. Anyway, what the hell is that? Oh, shit. Wait, oh. no, it's not... That. No. That's a fucking monocon. No. No. Hide now! 